Hi, Tom Stewart here with Cleaning Business Today. I'm with uh, Liz Trotter again, and we're going to take uh, the next hour or so to um, talk about what's going on with the coronavirus and some strategies to make some smart business moves to uh, navigate these uh, these difficult and trying times. Um, yesterday, we, 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 we talked about... Uh, non-traditional sources of revenue and we gave you a pricing model to uh, come up with 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 uh, the allowed time and a uh, bill rate for for commercial cleaning jobs I know a number of us are, are out there uh, working uh, those types of leads those type of contacts and um, I had several questions over the last couple of days from from people wanting to know how to to price those so that uh, was part of it. And then through that discussion, we had questions about, well, gee, how do you put a proposal together? What type of paperwork do you need? So we said that we were going to do that today. And that says Wednesday the 18th. That's not right, is it, Les? No, nope. I have Thursday the 19th. Yeah, well, <laughs> what was it? Are uh, you what, looking at a PowerPoint? What does, what does your favorite singer sing about? <laughs> I don't know. Come on, Who's my Cher. favorite singer? Cher? Oh, I, I do love Cher. Time. What? Oh, if I could turn back time. Oh, good one. Good one, Tom. I guess I did on the PowerPoint. Do you uh, have a PowerPoint up? No, I don't. Oh, yeah, you're right. I'm not showing that, did I? Excuse well, me. You could have changed it. You could literally turn back time right now, Tom. Oh, oh yeah. If I could just roll that back. Well, let's hold on a second. Yeah, what, what does that say? Let's see. <laughs> I guess I was confused, wasn't I? I don't know. I I, I don't I, I don't even know what you're talking about right now. We're good. You just need to say, hi, this I'm Tom Stewart. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna start over again. We I wanna read him. Um okay. <laughs> I'm glad somebody's cracking up, Bridget, because we're always just it's got a something little, going on. A little bit better. Yeah. It's been it's been a long week. It's been a long oh, it's been a long few weeks, hasn't it? Is today Thursday the nineteenth? I, I think it is. Good job, Tom. I'm impressed by that. Nice. I'm double checking. I, don't now, know. I wish you would have spelled all the words correctly, but come on. What's wrong? Just kidding. <laughs> okay. <It's crazy. laughs> so Okay. You know, what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is just basically uh, quickly go over commercial templates. Uh, there's three documents. And I'm going to show you where they are now because I said I was going to do that yesterday at the end of the call. And somehow Liz got me confused and forgot to remind me. And, uh -uh. Okay. Uh, I love all the reminders you get today. Yeah. Keep me straight. So, bing, 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 bing. Um, you go to clean business today and you got to know the secret code you got to type in corona dash virus coronavirus dash downloads rather if you see that right here you have to oh. type that in it's too small you can't see it mm -mm. maybe you could copy it tom and maybe put it in your powerpoint it's really tiny i could copy it in if i go to comments if i do that Awesome. Is that working? That's perfect. It? Yep, perfect. Okay. Um, down here at the bottom, we added a couple more buttons. If you click on this, you'll download the spreadsheet that that uh, we shared yesterday that you used to calculate uh, the, the the bill rate. If you click on this here, it will download the three documents uh, we're going to be sharing with you today. Um, the first one would be a proposal template. Liz, you used one of these yesterday, didn't you? I did. Um, this is just a Word document, and obviously you need to change some of the words. This is who your, you know, the, the, your, your prospect, and their contact information, and a date, and you can put your name and address and stuff down here if you want, but... Yeah, 
it's, it's pretty simple. It's only three pages. And what you really are, are just doing is kind of outlining a summary about, you know, who the client is and what they're, what, what they're asking you to do. And the statement of the problem basically is kind of like a narrative of the scope of work. It's not like a lot of detail, but in this case, you know, it's a facility and you kind of list in the rooms in it and what you're going to be doing. If you're going to be doing this for somebody who's concerned about coronavirus, you'd probably be talking about sanitizing high touch surfaces and, you know, with, with you know, medical grade disinfectants or whatever, whatever your, 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 your pitch is there. And, and that would kind of actually be in the proposed uh, solution part of it would, would, would be here. The statement would say that, you know, they're concerned about, you know, eliminating pathogens that could cause, you know, things such as coronavirus. In the, in the proposed solution, you would talk about, you know, what you, you're going to be doing just in a narrative fashion. And the pricing part is down here. I'll put a space here and make that easier. And you get these numbers from the uh, spreadsheet that uh, we went over yesterday. Talk a little about your qualifications. You can put some information in here about insurance if you had it or how long you've been in business. Same thing about, about your company that, that, that makes it unique. And you mentioned, we mentioned an appendix here which is really the scope of the real scope of work. And that is the second document. And this is just basically listing the areas and what you're going to be doing and the frequencies you're going to be doing it. And this is really how you would, when you were, use the spreadsheet that we shared yesterday, this would be what you would be studying and, and, and allowing times for, for these activities to figure out um, how long it would take to, to do these activities and come up with the workloading to, to come up with your rate. And there's a third document. I promise you there's a third document. Contract, bang. So if you want, just depending upon, you know, this is almost a thing that you got to, you know, have, have a feel for it. When you're meeting with your prospect, you're kind of talking about what, what they want done and what their scope of work is. And at the very least, you're going to come back with them and give them a proposal along with the scope of work. If you want to be presumptuous and say that, you know, this is going really well, I'll make it easy and I'll just go ahead and close a contract in there. So if you want to do all of that, you can sign it, then this is what a contract looks like. And you just kind of reiterate, you know, who you are, who they are, and, you know, what it is that you're going to be doing. And you're, you'd be referencing the same appendix that was over here in terms of the scope of work talk about terms. We talked about that yesterday and this has like net 30, but I would probably do 15 days and I'd be billing in advance and you can kind of change this to say that this would be where you'd be talking about what you're going to be charging. And if there's any add ons, this is, uh, you know, it's got some add on stuff that you can put in there. Um, Actually, this is the terms are here. I'm sorry. We're just talking da, 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 about if it's after 30 days. This is how you terminate it. Excuse me. This would be how long it is. Are you going to, you know, going week by week? This is good price, good for, you know, a year, whatever you do that. And if anybody, if it's going to be like good for the next 12 months, you'd then go ahead and, you know, say, you know, if somebody needs to get out of it. That That's how you would do it. That's what this part was about. Sorry, this is where you put your terms, and this is uh, net fifteen. And if they're late, you can charge them them interest. This is explaining the days that you're working, and for this particular project, um, you, you're doing. Uh, we're giving them two options, I guess: a uh, three visit option and a five visit option. That was why there were two prices up here but all of this can be changed this is where you talk about your insurance as well 
And here's some of the legality stuff where you're telling them, if you take my employee, we try to hire my people, you owe me money. Talk about, you know, you, you know, are going to follow safe practices. You're going to use your equipment and you're kind of use reserving the right to do this in the way that you feel that, you know, it should be done. You're, you're the contractor and you'll get the scope of work done using best practices based on your judgment legal stuff you sign it so you can give all three of these documents together or you can do it in two phases pros and cons to both it makes it easier if you give it to all three of them at once but if they they're not sold yet sometimes the legal stuff can can be a turnoff you know if you're really trying to sell them i think it's usually best to pitch them on all the reasons why they want your service and when you've got them uh you know, nodding their head to that, then you can kind of show them the fine print. But to be real, all of this is really, you know, this is about as, as basic basic as it, as it gets. Um, if you want to get fancy, you can do proposals that are a lot more involved. Um, like here's an example of uh, a proposal. This is just the proposal part for, for a commercial contract. Um, commercial work property management actually some other discussion somewhere down the road we could get into all the parts of that what that looks like but at the moment probably not the best use of our time we need to come up with quick hit stuff to find revenue during the uh, coronavirus so that's basically it so looks pretty easy doesn't it Liz you know it actually really was easy Tom I um I use Word to do it, and I just um you know I just find I found the different terms and then in, and changed them over to my terms and then was good to go. So it, it actually really was easy. I'm trying to find you. I lost you here. I had one of those messages pop up, and now I can't see you anymore. You can't see me? No, and it's not because of you, it's because of me. I had um, I had one of those messages, the uh, messenger messages pop up. I went to get rid of it and everything went away. There you go, you're back. I think I just heard something maybe I've never heard before. What? It's not because of you, it's because of me. Uh, no? Yeah. Oh, that, that oh, yeah. yeah. I'm just kidding. It's, like, it's no, always because of me, really. I, I'm used to that. Um, yeah. If you're if you're going after commercial work, you can download those, put them to work, save yourself some time. You don't have to fret over how to do it. Just kind of do a you know find and replace, and and you know obviously you'll need to make some tweaks on the finer points, but it should save you a lot of time. What's going on in the um, world of uh, living with coronavirus, Les? What uh, what have you heard today? So in, we had um, a meeting today in one of my mastermind accountability groups. And without getting into detail, obviously, we talked about um, uh, messaging to the customers. Um, what are we going to do with our employees? You know, what's the strategy? Um, staying open versus closing. A lot of businesses right now are, are choosing to close for a couple of weeks. So, you know, what is that strategy? How do you make that decision? Um, I think those are the main topics that that I keep getting um, asked about. Should we stay open? Should we close? Um, oh, and then the employees. Um, should we lay them off? Should we just reduce their hours? know how do we want to manage that and then communication to the customers uh, responding to um, to them when they want to skip move a clean whatever what that response is and then how to reach out proactively about you know what can we what else can we do for them um, you know can we get the groceries for them you know maybe give it a little bit and do a little bit more um, Oh, what's that called? Um, concierge type services. 
Right. Uh, walk their pets. Uh, you know, whatever. Maybe you don't want to hang out outside. So those are the conversations that I'm hearing right now. People are still very much not comfortable and um, concerned about what's next. You know, every day it's something new, right? So what's next? What's next? What are you seeing as next time? What are your conversations about? I had a fair amount of discussion today about you know, what are our responsibilities as as employers and service providers to make sure that we aren't taking taking you know, cleaning professionals and that, that may have the virus into, you know, homes and in the workplace or vice versa, taking cleaning professionals and put them into a, a home where somebody may have been infected exposed or to the infection or have the infection and you know are there potential liabilities with that and how do we do things to show that we're being responsible um if you're ever in a if you have if you ever find yourself in the in the in the, in the unfortunate situation to be in in, in litigation and uh, done that a time or two um you never want to be in a position where the plaintiff's attorney can make a legitimate claim that you were negligent because being negligent means that it wasn't an honest mistake. Basically you weren't even trying and there's several bad things with that. One is the uh, amount of, of monies that, that, that you would owe could uh, be a whole lot higher. And secondly, um, it's not even you don't have the corporate veil anymore. They can go after you personally as an individual if, if, if you're negligent. So that's really, really bad. So we want to make sure that we aren't being negligent. We're going in a direction where um, we're looking for ways that, that we can have um, our, our cleaning professionals uh, attest every day that they don't have a fever. They haven't, uh, you know, gone to a foreign country within the last 14 days. There's nobody in their household with, uh, you know, the coronavirus and a few other questions just to um, show and document that, you know, you're, you're making an honest effort to make sure that, that everybody's healthy. And the other part of that, Liz, is getting your clients to, to, to kind of affirm to the same thing. And we're looking at ways where we're sending out reminder notices to at least have that information there in the reminder notice and maybe even have like a checkbox getting them to attest that, you know, I'm, I'm saying no to all of these things. You know, so those, yeah. are, those are the things that we're working on. Cool. Well, uh, it looks like Robin has a couple of questions here. Oh, lost your volume again. Um, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yep. All right. that looks like there's a couple of questions coming in from Robin. Robin, are you able to see these too, Tom? Yeah, it says the leads have dropped off this last week. We're using Google Ads, but no leads. Saying the same on your end. Yeah, um, I mean, we're, we're getting some leads. Um, the sales look like they're a lot of like one-time cleans and some of them seem to want their home cleaned because, you know, they're concerned of the virus. Um, you know, people who are being like discharged from like hospital was one of them. Um, people moving, the, those types of, 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 of things, but uh, yeah. I, there's certainly not as much uh, activity as, as what we would hope to have, you know, in, in late March. I mean, normally this is a really busy time of year. What, what are you guys seeing, Liz? Yeah, same thing. Um, pretty much one-time cleans and uh, uh, just our, our current clients asking for some additional stuff. Everybody's wanting, you know, a thorough disinfection. Um We've been having conversations with them about whether or not to be in the house while we clean. Uh, yeah, but we, I wish, I wish we were having more leads. We did get a new customer in our Portland office yesterday, which was kind of surprising. Hey, Rebecca, um, but um, that, that's not 
not common right now. So what are you, what are you thinking about uh, Robin's question about should he continue to advertise at the same level? Increase, decrease? Uh, I can't tell you that I've proven this theory to work, but it would seem that since everybody's concerned about the coronavirus, if you can, like if you're you're doing doing like AdWords, be looking for for ways of tying into the coronavirus and basically explaining how you're reducing the mitigating the risk of someone getting the infection. Um, I think uh, that's where all all the action is. Honestly, um, we've been reacting to so many things uh, in other parts of the business that we um, we haven't done a ton on, 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 on the marketing side. Um, I guess what we're doing is a lot is like on the finance side, trying to get line to credit lined up and worked out and been talking to some vendors to see if you know we find ourselves losing some revenue can we work with them to pay bills and down the road or to slower rate um and all that's going quite well actually we might, and that may be a topic for for tomorrow because um i think it's safe to say no oh, i don't know i hate to say that we don't, never want to never want to concede the game before you know you, you have to but it, at least we want to be prepared for the real possibility that we're going to have uh, have a loss in income for the foreseeable future. Well, we already have had yeah. a loss in income, so we, we already know that that that's true. At least for us, um, not, maybe not everybody, but for us, we have had um, a, a loss in revenue. So I think that uh, it's a great idea to have that topic tomorrow, Tom. Of, you know, who are the people you can call? Who are the people that are potentially deferring payments, et cetera? And there's a lot of them. Uh, I think the list of people who are is a lot longer than people who aren't or companies who aren't. Creditors are looking at this differently than what they normally would if you know, one of their clients just calls up and says, hey, you know, I need, you know, I need to re renegotiate the terms because Normally, the assumption is this business is screwing up. You know, why am I going to give them a break there? You know, I guess they're just a, you know, bad debt, if you will. I mean, sometimes stuff happens as explained, but more times than not, they're not that open to it. But everybody that we've talked to is, is like almost expecting it. And nobody's blaming, you know, the, the creditors aren't blaming the businesses for the fact that there's a virus out there screwing everything up. So, um, Certainly, and now is the time to do it. You don't want to take what money you have, what capital you have, and spend it all until you get down to the end. The old saying, how did you go broke? And it's like, well, slowly at first and then really fast at the end. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going broke is better. It's a lot better to figure out as soon as you can that you're going broke because you're buying yourself a ton more time. Yeah, so... So there's a couple different ways to look at that, Robin. If you're going to be spending money on AdWords, make sure that you're doing really wisely, right? Yeah. And watch that money because you want to be holding on to as much cash as you can. And um, probably should talk about the whole cash piece of that versus, you know, money in the bank piece too, maybe tomorrow, Tom, when we have that that conversation. Yeah, we can. Right, let's see, we got a Couple more questions here. Robin wants to know: Are you spreading hours around your techs to give hours and then keep them busy? Are the techs applying for unemployment for lost hours? The unemployment part. I know that we talked about that a little bit in a couple couple locations. The rules are still kind of evolving. I think it was in Ohio that. Employees are being encouraged to apply for unemployment even if they're still working. So when they're not working, <laughs> they're already in the pipeline. Is that your understanding? Yeah, well, um, I think most states have always been like that. Um, it's just a little bit more encouraged right now. Uh, I know that Tim, my husband, was on unemployment maybe 15 years ago. And... Um, when he went back to work, they he stayed on unemployment until his um, he was working the same amount of hours as he had been working before. So as hours are reduced, 
they kind of fill the fill the gap there. So uh, I, I feel like we've had an a employee that did that at one point in time. Her hours were reduced, and I can't remember this too many years ago, but um, I, I know that if your hours are reduced, at least here in Washington State, uh, you can go and apply for for unemployment, and you will get some some benefits. They'll be obviously much reduced, and then you they ask you every week, how many hours did you work, and you know your your unemployment benefits get adjusted. Uh, let's see. Uh, what, are, what, are the, uh, what are the things that we're we're implementing in Dayton next week? I think is going to a four day work week rather than spreading the hours out. I mean, we're just kind of kind of jam them into a shorter week. So I guess in some regards, that's a way of spreading it out. But it takes you know some of the edge off if at least you know everybody's getting an extra free day a week. Yeah, having another day off. Also, if you're going to file for unemployment, that's going to work in your favor because you lost an entire day's pay. Uh, Bridget is asking, um, we have just implemented today the residential techs going home after the last house, and some aren't happy about this. How would you address this? What are the Lizisms here? Um, okay, so what aren't they happy about? Do they just want to hang out at the office and chat? Is that what it is, Bridget? I'm not really sure what the question is. I'm that's sort of what I'm hearing. Is that what you're hearing, Tom, in that question? Yeah, I was kind of wondering the same thing. Why? I mean, I, I'm assuming they're driving their own car, so that's kind of saving them a trip. Maybe they have to, like, take dirty, you know, cleaning products home and clean them at their home rather than the office. I, I'm guessing. You might have to fill us in a little bit on that, Bridget. Yeah. If it's just because they're they're missing the opportunity to, you know, chit chat and get together. Yeah, we don't. Okay, missing the time and money they use they used to get to come back to the office. So they used to get paid. Oh. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, um, that, <laughs> I mean, the money's not there right now. <laughs> um, how I would probably address that is that their safety is more important than, and, and the fewer times that people are, are coming together like that, the better. So um, it, it really is a, a safety concern there and going straight back to their house is better. I'm sorry, Liz, go ahead. I don't even know what I was gonna say. I'm looking for something to wipe my face with. <laughs> like, where's a tissue? Oh, yeah. I need a tissue. It, you know the the other the other thing, Bridget, is be as transparent as you can be about the financial situation in the company. It's like you're losing revenue, you're losing customers, and you want to make sure that everybody has a job down the long run. And you're going to have to make some changes. I mean, you're doing it for a safety purpose, but you say that you also do it. You got you know you have to cut back if you you can't you can't be spending money the way you did when you know the market was good. If you do, nobody's going to have a job. So this is, you know, we're all having to uh, step up to the plate and, and 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 make some sacrifices to make this work. And this is part of what they need to do for safety, first and foremost. But secondly, so you got enough money to pay everybody and pay the bills and come back next week and do it again. And and my guess is, if you're like the rest of us, you're losing some revenue. And you're losing some jobs. They're simply, it's just not there. It's not that you're not giving it to them. There is no money to be getting, right? As your company gets bigger and you have more revenue, you can pay for more things. When your company's smaller and has less revenue, you have to pay for less things. And as your company is shrinking, that's the situation that you're running into. Um, Stephanie is saying that in Iowa, hey, Steph, I haven't seen you in forever. Yeah. And, yeah. And um, Iowa, they have a work share unemployment program. They have to apply for it, then submit spreadsheets weekly, and then it allows people to still work, retain, uh, staff retains their labor, and the unemployment fills the gap. And that's how it is here in Washington, too. So, okay, good. Um, Bridget, I see that you are talking with them every day. That's good. That, that goes a long way, just so they feel like they're in the loop. Uh, the big thing that I'm always um, pushing toward is that you're working with them and talking with them instead of talking at them, instead of just telling them stuff, right? That 
this is us. We're we're all in this thing together, and we're all working together for the best outcomes. So that that seems to be working pretty well for us too. I I do think that this decision about closing down or staying open is uh, going to be a hotter topic here real soon too. Not all states. I don't think that all states yet, to my um, understanding, have had a clear designation as to whether or not they are, um, what's the word I want, Tom? Um, oh, golly day. And essential. Yeah, well, essential, <laughs> like, you know, necessary, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, essential services yet. So until, until, and, or unless somebody actually comes out, somebody in a position of power comes out and says that, we're kind of in a mm, situation. We're, we're deciding for ourselves. So we have to decide, are we essential or aren't we? Um, and if there's, it's kind of a, a tricky little thing. On the one hand, I, I've seen companies that I highly respect say, no, I think that the responsible move is to uh, shut down business for two weeks and quarantine or for however long and quarantine and um, contribute to safety in that way by not taking any chance of spreading anything. On the other side, I've seen people say, no, nope, I think that the responsible thing is to help in the process of breaking that chain of infection and, and helping to clean up the area so that there is less, less, fewer pathogens being spread around. So you kind of are, we're all, each of us having to sort of decide where we fall in that camp. You know, what, do, what, what are we doing? What are, what are we personally standing for in our businesses? And then whatever that is, get on board with that decision and, and stick to it. Make all your decisions based on that thought. Are you in that same mindset there, Tom? You kind of got to decide and then, all in on that way, whatever you decide. Yeah. And I guess layered over that is the reality of it's a rapidly changing thing. And every day we learn more and, you know, you got, you got, you got to make a decision. You got to go for it. But at the same time, I think it's important to, you know, take a look at, well, what do I know now that I didn't know yesterday? And, does that change what, you know, the, the, the decision and. And literally every day, every single day, it, if it, not multiple times. It, it's like a month's worth of stuff is happening in 24 hours. Yeah. yeah. Now I find myself reevaluating, uh, keeping in mind, this is my decision and looking at new information multiple times a day. Uh, so, you know, just sticking with it and then reevaluating on Mondays, that's not going to work. You're getting a 180 change to the situation every in a week. Yeah. And, you know, part of that is, is, is what a, what's our government doing, you know, at our federal, state and local level. I mean, they, you know. We certainly have an obligation to follow the, the the law, but the trick is at the moment there's just so much unclarity, you know, lack of clarity and ambiguity that, uh, in the absence of that, we're having to use our best judgment. So, you know, the, the rules are changing every day. There's a lot of things happening in terms of, you know, Congress and Senate. You know, did today with uh, sick pay and 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 you know the FMLA and um, it, you know, it's, it's still unclear exactly what the what all the the, the nuts and bolts of that are. But uh, you know, there's going to be be you know some rules are going to affect us in, in in that regard. And it wouldn't surprise me that uh, you're going to start seeing more of the details fleshed out in terms of. You know what businesses do they want engaged, and which ones do they not? And what's essential and what isn't? Um, but at the moment, you know, we have to look around us and look at the, you know, use our use our best judgment. Yeah, 
Tom, what did you think about the email that was sent out from John Barrett on behalf of ISSA? Jack is asking about that. I'm sorry. I saw it. It's in my mailbox. Along with, <laughs> along, with, along with hundreds of other emails that haven't been open. <coughs> what did he say? So basically, he said that we are um, being viewed as essential first responders. Um, but I, I was wondering if he's, I, I, I'm guessing that this is Rebecca's question as well. Um, does he have, what's the authority that he's basing that on? Is it just what he believes to be the truth? Um, we want to respect everyone's decision. Many folks are relying on cleaning experts to guide them. Just drafted a letter explaining that cleaning pros are essential. That's from David. Yeah. Uh, David Kaiser. Uh, so currently, I guess it's just the same thing. I was wondering, uh, the reason I was asking it about John Barrett's letter is I was wondering, oh, we got one of those readjusting pieces of information from Robin <laughs> in there right now uh, for everybody that's on the Facebook Live, Pennsylvania is shutting down non-life sustaining businesses tonight at 8 p.m. So life sustaining is different than essential businesses too, right? So there's a new a new little term we got. I, I, I guess, um, but there's still a lot of gray area there, you know, so. Yeah. Suppose you're cleaning you know, public, you know, common areas in, 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 in an apartment community, for instance. Do we How about do, an apartment community for elderly people? Yeah, do you stop doing that? Do you? I mean, I, I don't know. I would, you know, I think you could build an argument that that's pretty, you know, from. <laughs> From a sustaining life standpoint, there's there's a lot more upside than there is risk to that. Yeah. I, so everybody's going to have to make that decision for themselves. There's just no way around that for right now until somebody comes out with a list that says, you know, if you are code 2435 and then you are considered essential and they're not coming out with that list. So until that happens... We're going to have to make that decision, but and it has to be a decision that we feel we can defend to, to all the stakeholders, right? There's going to be a lot of people that are going to want, <laughs> want us to be explaining that employees, customers, government, peers, everybody. Right now, I'm seeing a lot of uh, interesting peer pressure uh, working in a lot of different ways. What are you doing? What are you doing? Well, uh, everybody's looking to somebody to say, you know, what's What's the right answer? In my uh, mastermind accountability group yesterday, uh, there was a conversation. It was kind of a, a long conversation, too, about when do I decide, how do I decide, and when do I decide to, to shut down? And the conversation is all around, and everybody's very excited i guess is the, the term about their position which is great that's what we want right you need to have you need to be enthusiastic about whatever your position is so that you can defend it because if anybody that doesn't i feel like anybody that doesn't have sort of a clear direction for themselves is just putting themselves in a bad position uh, with everybody it, it's hard to have faith in and trust your leader, if your leader's like, well, I don't know, I'm checking it out, uh, I'm still not sure, even if you're not sure, I know that I'm not 100% sure about all of my decisions, but this is the first time I've said that to anybody. Everybody in my life thinks that Liz is just 100% all in this way, because I, I don't know, and that's kind of what I expect from you too, Tom as the CEO of Castle Keepers, right? I expect you to be saying, this is our direction. This is where we're going. This is what we're doing. And I'm jumping on board with that. I'm not stupid. I know you're not 100% sure. <laughs> and, and you're pretty clear that you're still figuring it out and changing and adjusting as we go, as are the rest of us. But still, the message needs to be, as the leaders of our companies, that we, we are confident making our decisions. 
we've thought about all of the information, we've taken it all in, we've made this decision, and we're confident. Yeah, good point. There's a big difference between saying, I don't know what to do versus based on the best information we have now, this is the best course of action and we're going there. And if, you know, two hours from now, there's a, another piece of information that changes that. I mean, you know, when yeah. the situation changes, you need to be adaptable. And if it's rational, change with it. So that's kind of the environment we're living in. But you, you don't want to be in a situation where you're doing nothing because you don't know what to do. I mean, yeah. if, and even if you don't know what to do, you certainly don't want to publicize that. <laughs> and really, if you don't know what to do, if you don't know what to do because you haven't, you don't have any resources, reach out. Everybody in this industry um, is getting tons of resources. We can help you with that. We can help you educate yourself. But if you don't know what you're doing because you're just too confused, then you take some time. You know, get yourself some resource materials that you trust, read them, and take some time to yourself and make a decision, decide what you're going to do. Even if you decide to change again in two hours because new information pops up, that's totally legitimate. Uh, that's what I think right now, that's what the good businesses are doing. They're deciding on best case right now is this. And we're remaining flexible because new information is coming at us. Things are changing too fast. This is a new world. We we don't have all the answers right now. What, what's David saying over here, Tom? He's got a link. So something in YouTube. It says check it out. I know that added value. He's talking about technical added value to everyone on this call. National Geographic. Vox and others publishing how soap kills the coronavirus. Okay. HCT graduates will remember soap as having two-sided molecules. Okay. All right. So he's really pushing on soap there. Steph is rewriting policies daily. Us too, Steph. Yeah. Um, and, and maybe not rewriting them, but we're tweaking them, modifying them, right? Making adjustments. Expanding and addressing, you know, because... Yeah. When this whole thing really started getting hot, which doesn't, what was it, a week ago? I mean, we've been seeing it for a few weeks, but yeah. I mean, you know, it's that whole exponential thing and doubles and doubles and every six days, it's, you know, the, the number of, of, of illnesses doubles. And when big numbers double, they get really big numbers. And we just needed to do the best we could when we started, but now we're kind of going back and trying to flush a lot of stuff out. Yeah, um, Bridget, if you saw Stephanie's comment that her staff is helping her to get that stuff in writing, great. Absolutely. Whoever, whoever, however, whatever. You don't have to rewrite everything, right? Just put in some of those blurbs. And it doesn't have to be perfect. A lot of times we're trying to get everything so perfect, get something down today that, that you're going to do because, it, again, it might change. So get something down there. <laughs> I love it. Stephanie says, we are going to be invincible when this is safe for us all to go back to life. Because <laughs> <clears throat> things oh, are... I love that. I love that, though, because that's, what, that's what's going to happen. Right now, everybody is just irrational and scared and... There's a lot of accounts out there that says it's going to be, you know, a year and a half, couple of years before there's a, a vaccine for the virus. So at some point, people are going to get sick of being, you know, afraid and hiding in their basement. And they're going to say, you know, I, 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 I have to live. So I'm going to have to figure out how to live in the world with the coronavirus. And that's when our real opportunity starts. At the moment, uh -huh. at, at the moment, if people are more preoccupied with buying toilet paper and bottled water, it's just gonna it's gonna be hard to 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 make good stuff happen in that environment. But you know that all makes sense too. I know people get so frustrated with that, but that that's a normal reaction to fear is you know just grabbing on and holding, trying to you know feel safe. That'll, that's going to change too, and people will be trying to hold on to other things. And one of the things they'll be trying to hold on to is 
cleaning, right? Well, Hopefully, and the safety of cleaning. Yeah, and if we do, um, our, we do our jobs right and explain how we're making them safe, or that's the part that I love about this. I mean, I the virus sucks, and I wish it wasn't here, but you know, it wasn't. I mean, the narrative for the last few years is it's all about digital marketing. It's all about you know just being able to tell the story and ranking a website and you know getting a bunch of reviews from whatever means necessary to get a bunch of reviews. And I mean, we've had discussions on Facebook where people are arguing it doesn't, you know, cleaning really isn't even that important. It's all about the marketing. Well, I think here in the last few weeks, that's all changed. I mean, marketing is always going to be important, but I think the cleaning aspect of this and the sanitation part of this is going to have a whole nother level of importance that maybe it didn't have a couple of months ago. And for the long term is what you're saying, not just not just right now where we're in the thick of the coronavirus. This is actually has the potential to shift mindsets. Yep. This is going to be, you know, like 9-11 was to getting on an airplane. And was it 20 some odd years later? And, you know, we're still, you know, the whole flight experience is, is, is changed greatly from what it was prior to 9-11. To, to and I think the way we clean and the value placed on cleaning is going to be, uh, you know, analogous to, you know, the safety precautions that, that we take when we travel that kind of spun out of 9-11. Of yeah. It sounds like everybody over here is on the same wavelength. Stephanie, David, um, Bridget, Janet. Yep. It sounds like everybody's kind of on that same thinking that it's going to it's going to be better for our industry. People are being educated in a really big way. And Stephanie says she's immunocompromised also. So she's doing it all from home. My, my understanding was that you pretty much have been doing things from home for a long time too. So it might be a little bit easier for you, Stephanie, just because you have probably more experience working from home. I, I know a lot of people are still struggling with the idea of, of remote operations, even semi-remote. Uh, David, Aretha Franklin. So that's R-E-S-P-E-C-T. The second uh, singer reference today on this Facebook Live. If you weren't on early, you didn't get to hear Tom's reference earlier. Yeah. No. There was no singing. No, no, I can't sing either. I I love to sing, but I'm routinely asked not to. Sad. It's a really sad thing. <laughs> Well, anything else you guys concerned about that you're focusing on right now? Interested in chatting about? Been on about 50 minutes. So did we, did we decide that tomorrow we're, we're going to talk about how to make smart business moves on the financial side, talk to our creditors, look at, you know, how much cash we have. Uh, you know, I think uh, I saw, um, a comment earlier about you know keeping dry powder I think that's really really important Robin mentioned that that yeah. uh, you know you can't have too much cash on hand right now and we're gonna have to spend it on things but <laughs> we want to we want to make that last as long as we can um, so that's what we'll, that's what we'll do tomorrow um, I want to make sure I don't forget to show you where cleaning business today is and one last time how to get to the resource page while you're pulling that up starlene says we are working together and reaching out to other companies i reached out to bridget today as our unemployment has new rules so yeah i i think that's another thing this this um industry has always been really good about sharing and um, working together but i think we're we're seeing a whole new level now over in I believe it's Colorado, Denver, uh, a couple of the companies that I work with are they hooked up with five five companies in their area, and they got on I think it was Channel Nine News together, uh, how the the how they're cleaning up Denver over there in their area. So I thought that was an amazing idea. We probably should at some point in time time tomorrow Tom maybe on Monday. 
talk about um, how we can get uh, into the media. The public relation of the yeah. that's, a, yeah. that's a good idea. Uh, Again, we, two? I, did I really have two good yeah. ideas on Facebook yeah, Live? Oh, Liz. Just and this is just what we need a must too. Yeah, coming in in the clinch there. Um, okay, cleaning. So, go ahead, Liz. I'm sorry. I, I was going to say just a reminder, Tom, that we can't see this. You can't. It looks, no, it, because it's too small. Oh, well. It's okay that, to show it. But, oh yeah, that is better for sure. Okay. You can still hear me. This is a new platform we're using today, so we're figuring it out. Okay, this is Cleaning Business Today, cleaningbusinesstoday.com. You guys know about that. Um, over here on the right, if you want to sign up for our newsletter, and if you haven't, I appreciate it that you would. Um, we, we push them out, and we'll, we'll keep you up to date with uh, all the stuff that, that we uh, learn about the virus. Um, over here on the left, is a big article that we did. If you haven't read this, and this is all on the coronavirus, I would uh, encourage you to do so. It's got a bunch of references here too. If you really want to get uh, geeky about the nuts and bolts and the science behind it, you can do that. And if you go to uh, do the whole um, forward slash coronavirus-downloads.com. It'll take you to our resource page. And down here are the two links to the uh, commercial bill rate calculator and the uh, templates for the uh, proposal and contract and scope of work that we talked about today. I'll paste the link again in our chat with uh, that special page with all the uh, downloads on it. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Well, I want to say just one last real quick thing is um, timing is important, you guys. So everything is moving so quickly that we are a lot of ideas, a lot of information, everything's coming at us um, really, really quickly. And we have to be making decisions quickly and in a timely manner because the timeliness of stuff really, really matters, and now even more than ever. I know a couple people that have just recently tried to put the, the letter out, send that letter out to their employees, the email out to their employees saying what they're doing. It's too late for that now, because now that's just a reminder to the customers to cancel service. So you got to be watching for timely timeliness on your messages, which is why we're doing these every day to keep you updated with what's what's new, what's fresh, what's today, you know, what's what's going on now, the decisions and stuff that you should be thinking about today and, and not not doing the stuff from a week ago or two weeks ago that could maybe get into a little trouble. That's it, Tom. Okay. That's uh, <coughs> this is the time to take action for sure. So um, you know hit us up, let us know what questions you have, what you need help with, and um, stay safe, get some rest. I mean, I'm going I'm to boil it down to something as simple as that. You know, I, I've talked to people and you can kind of just hear it in their voice and it's like, you're tired, right? It's like, guess what? I'm tired too. <laughs> it's, uh, this is, this is a heavy lift. So, you know, don't, uh, don't try to, to, you know, be Superman here. Let's uh, let's take care of ourselves too. This is uh, going to be a long game. So um, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll uh, be back here tomorrow at five o'clock Eastern. Thanks, guys. See y'all later. Bye bye. Bye bye.